heading right now for the final singles in the match between Shogun Yop and Kenta Nishimoto. This is when having crowds back really, really helps. Well, here's what we've seen over the last few hours. Uh, we started off with that big match, Hyo Kwang Hee continuing to get the better of Kento Momota, just as he had done in the Olympics a couple of months ago. Then in the men's doubles, uh, we saw a straight game victory, uh, Choi and Sio against uh, Hoki and Kobayashi, the loss of just 31 points. In the second singles, it was a very dominant display from Kenta Suniyama over Jion Hyuk Jin. That took just 48 minutes. And then in the second of the men's doubles, as we've just seen, a fairly straightforward first game for Koga and Watanabe. Kang and Kim came back at them much more strongly in the second game, but in the end, the Japanese pair just proved a little bit too strong. So that's why this tie is now locked together at 2-2. And it's winner take all as far as these two gentlemen are concerned. Slight difference in experience between the two. Cho hyun and Kenta Nishimoto. So here comes Cho hyun would have been practicing earlier, wondering whether he would be required. Well, cometh the moment, cometh the man, but whether he'll be able to stifle the attacking play of Kenta Nishimoto, another question entirely. Probably will have the majority of the support in the hall. Kenta Nishimoto. So Japan, two love down, but now big favourites to win this men's singles and go through by three matches to two. Unless Cho can do something about it. And really engaged in this match. There was another a match going on initially in the uh, auditorium, Thailand against China on court two. That finished a while ago, so everyone who was watching that match, now watching this one. Never met before, no real surprise there. I think Nishimoto, I think just be, well, first of all, delighted to have the chance to get Japan into the semis, because when they were too love down, things weren't looking particularly rosy for uh, from Japan's point of view. It is a really big ask for Cho, though. Only played six singles matches all year. On a couple of them, he's 25 now from Gunsan. Well, I would imagine that his heart is beating uh, a little faster than usual right now as he prepares to take on into Nishimoto. Lost out to Genka in uh, about an hour's worth of play. That's his only match so far in this event. And on the other side of the net, Kenta Nishimoto, ranked 16, he's been up as high as nine uh, about three years ago. Thomas Cup Silver from 2018. Got past uh, Canada's Jason Anthony Hoshu, then lost to Leong Jun Hao. And it was yesterday, and it was already 4 0, so it didn't matter as far as their progression was concerned. Henrik Boas of Denmark is in the chair. Maro Lelia of Indonesia. 
is the service judge. Ready to play. Ladies and gentlemen, on my right, Japan, represented by Kenta Nishimoto. And on my left, Korea, represented by Ko Chung Chu. Korea to serve. Novel. Play. Well, this is when you really feel the weight of expectation on your shoulders and your teammates watching on and doing it obviously for your country as well as for yourself well he missed that but I, I think it gives us an idea of the way Cho is going to approach this I think he knows if he gets involved in lengthy exchanges with Nishimoto. It's probably only going to be one result. He I mean, looks like he's going to be proactive, attacking. See as the match develops. Well, might just have lost his patience there, I think. Shimoto. That's great retrieving from the Japanese. Two, one. Well, it certainly looks like he's come to play, doesn't he, Cho? That was a little nervy, wasn't it, from Nishimoto? Just because you're top 20 player in the world doesn't mean you're immune from feeling the pressure. 
he could argue there's more pressure on Nishimoto because he would be the favourite and expected to win. It's almost a free roll for Choke. So it's all over. Three, four. Again, Nishimoto. And in the end, he was just rather overwhelmed by the non stop weight of shots of Cho. judgment from Nishimoto. Five, that went pretty four. high. How to judge when it was just hanging in the air like that, but he made the right call. weakest shot that Cho has hit in this match. I think he knew his fate Six, the minute that five. shuffle was heading over the net at uh, the perfect height for Nishimoto to pounce. Came Gifra at that one. Retrieving again from Nishimoto. Kept himself alive in the point. And then ends up winning it.
can see from that replay that shuttle was heading right for the line. been nail biting for hands of both these nations. We'll take that. Never won a major tournament this year, Moto. Runner up in the French Open. That was back in 2017. The Russian Open way back 2013. Actually, he's got a Thomas Cup silver. He'd love to go on better this week. He started well in terms of getting the win his nation needs to get them into the semis. Fantastic get again from Nishimoto. Must be getting a little bit frustrating for Cho. Especially when he keeps losing the points at the end of it. Just being worn down. Oh, where did he find that from? An absolute gem out of nothing Ten. from Kenta Nishimoto. Run well inside the line. Fabulous angle he created there. I think it surprised Cho, to be honest, like than anything else. a very handy interval lead for the Japanese. Nishimoto making an early statement of intent here in the decider. Oh, 
前が今さ、開いてしまってもたかれる分とか結構取れるじゃないですか前がね、前前前前相手の動く結構早いからStill more than capable the way we, he's played so far. Put together a little run of points. Could potentially put Nishimoto under pressure again. Japanese. First point after the interval for that 26 shot rally. Clean winners, Nishimoto, but defensively he's been unbelievably good. And he's just frustrating Cho into making well, a series of unforced errors.
Once again, brilliant from Mishimoto. Stay alive in this rally. That time, though, it was the Korean who had the last word. There's none better than that. 14, 10. Just to keep Cho at arm's length. Frustration 15, from Choke. So it seems to me the longer the rally goes on, invariably, the more chance that Nishimoto has of winning the point. Choke trying to be a bit more proactive and shorten the rally a bit and went for a shot that maybe wasn't there. Judgment by Nishimoto that was in by a long way. Inching towards the finish line in its opening game, Nishimoto.
So I can see what it means to him. He knows he's got his country's fate resting in his hands. And so far, he's looking good in the opening game. Unusual misstep from Nishimoto. 13, Once again, look, he was doing a really good job of frustrating Cho. from Nishimoto who moves to within two points 19, of the opening game now. 19. Seven game points for Kenta Nishimoto. Just over did that a fraction. That'll do nicely. 21 points to 15. First game goes to Kenta Nishimoto. And Japan now with one foot in the semi-finals, having trailed two love 
at one stage in this tie. It wasn't the prettiest game you'll ever see. 30 minutes it took, but half an hour well spent from Nishimoto's point of view. And for the first time today, the Koreans playing catch-up. So the point of no return from Korea's point of view. Cho has to win this game to keep his nation's hopes alive. He gets phenomenal height. He's a tallish guy anyway, 5'11". And he's really got some screen. Haven't actually seen him play that shot too much in the match so far. I wonder if that signals that he's maybe going to be a little more offensive in this second game. First game, he, his defence was wonderful and frustrated Cho time and time again into making errors. Read the intent that time, the Korean. starting to believe now if, if they ever doubted but obviously when you're too loved down that looks a long way back play again from Nishimoto. He was not known he's beaten, does he? And that is going to be a massive frustration for Cho. To lose that kind of point where he thinks he's in business and then he sees Nishimoto do that. Brilliant.
Well, finally, he gets one past the defences of Nishimoto. decision to play a few shorter rallies in the second game. I also have to wonder whether Cho is just looking a tad weary. We've only been playing for 35 minutes or so, but in very long rallies. Just looks like he's maybe blowing a little bit to me. Green. Oh, absolutely nailed down the line now. Can't hit the shuttle any better. Play the video in the badminton coaching manual. Oh, Haven't been many cheap points in the match actually, either way. Well, I'm surprised he missed that. That was kind of a total reversal of the way the match had gone in the first game. In the sense that Nishimoto was the aggressor. Cho producing some great retrieving, staunch defence, and eventually, Ira came from the other side of the net. to hit the line. Four, six. And a shot. <laughs> oh, did, yeah. Excellent again from Nishimoto.
Ah, well, there's a, a really well struck repast from Cho. Just to remind Nishimoto that he's still on the premises. About as good a shot as he's played in the match so far, probably that. Just a reminder that the Commerce Cup quarterfinals continue this afternoon. We're going to be a little delayed for Denmark versus India, but that will be coming up next on this court. The conclusion of this match after a, a brief pause. Straightforward kill that time for Nishimoto. serving notice but it's not going away here keeping Nishimoto honest Shot. Great athleticism, let alone the technique required. 300 kilometers an hour plus that one. From Nishimoto. been absolutely outstanding that's a good lead and absolutely outstanding in this match so far particularly from Nishimoto but Cho's had his moments also Seven it is at the interval. So far, so good for Kenta Nishimoto in Japan. Nishimoto seal the deal here, 11-7 up, 10 more points and a place in the semis 
awaits for Japan. Beautiful. Trying to win this trophy for just the second time after they were victorious in 2014. And unless Cho can mount what's starting to look like an unlikely comeback, there'll be another Thomas Cup slips by without them even making the final, let alone winning it. That's absolutely superb again. He's going to challenge this, Cho. I guess he doesn't have too much to lose at this juncture. And it was very, very well in, wasn't it? That is optimistic. One challenge remaining. Starting to control the match now, and I think the Japanese camp know it too. All of a sudden, Cho's starting to look uh, a little weary, isn't he? A little despondent, a little demoralised even. Nearly 400 kilometres an hour, that shot from Nishimoto. No wonder he didn't come back. Nishimoto fist pump again. 16, and he is really starting to enjoy himself here. And for probably just about the first time in the match, he's starting to relax just a little bit. Just four more points now. 17. Finds a wonderful angle again. Put it the way he's he's basically worn down his opponent, who gave him some trouble initially. 
And that was a long first game, half an hour or so. But the second game has been pretty much all Nishimoto as he moves to within two points of the match and consequently the tie for Japan. If he's going to go down, he's going to go down fighting, Joe. 10, 20. I think the umpire might have called out 10, 20. It's 19, 10 is the score. 10, 19 with Joe serving. Surprise flicker there, Cho. And that error brings up 10 match points for Kenta Nishimoto. Well, nothing like doing it the hard way. 21 points to 10. He takes the second game and the match. And it means that Japan have come from two love down to win this quarterfinal 3-2 and keep their hopes alive with only a second ever Thomas Cup victory. But there were lots of nervy moments. Nishimoto in a long first game against Cho took a while to grind his opponent down. The second game was more straightforward. 53 minutes the total match time. And it means that Japan safely through eventually to tomorrow's Thomas Cup semis. He's a pretty handy man to come to have coming out in the third singles, Kenta Nishimoto. And that was the final point and the moment. Japan knew they would be sticking around for tomorrow. Great effort from Cho. Started a big outsider, and that was pretty much the way it proved. Relief as much as joy for the Japanese contingent. Well, let's have a quick check then on what we've seen over the last few hours. The Okwang, he set the tone with victory over Momota, the man he'd beaten, of course, famously in the Olympics a few months ago. First men's doubles went convincingly to Choi and Seo against Hoki and Kobayashi. Japan in big trouble at that point. But then the start of the comeback. Kanto Sidiyama was excellent in dispatching Jion Hyok Jin in record time. And then Kang and Kim were taken apart by Koga and Watanabe as we've just seen in the third singles Nishimoto just too good for show. Well here's the draw then the other semi-final uh, is going to be between the winners of the Indo-Malaysia match on Denmark and India but look at that China Japan in the semis phenomenal that should be some match and of course you'll see it all live here with us 
Well, we're going to take a short break and then uh, we will have coverage of Denmark versus India. Jill Clock will be here to take you through that quarter final in a few moments' time. Until then, for me, Trevor Harris, and the whole outside broadcast crew here in Aarhus, hope you've enjoyed it. Bye for now.